All right, everyone. This is the time to talk about PUC vector, puck vector. Simple terms, puck vector. There are puck 18 vectors, puck 19 vectors. There are different names given to the puck vectors. But what are puck vectors? Why we use puck vectors? What are the components of puck vector? So basically, puck vector is widely used molecular cloning vector. So I, I must write it down. Okay, it is a molecular cloning vector. Molecular cloning vector, puck vector. And uh, the properties of the puck vector, if we talk about, now they are obtained by modifying the PBR322 vectors. Okay, so we know PBR322 vector. Uh, once we modify the PBR322 vector, they become puck vectors. And then uh, there are smaller. So these vectors are smaller than PBR322. Okay, PBR322 vectors are near about 4.3 to 4.4 kb in length approximately, while the puck vectors are near about 2.7 kilobases in length. So obviously smaller than the PBR322 vector. The copy number for the puck vector is is good 500 to 600 normally naturally. So the only advantage the puck vector has over the PBR322 is that it has a high copy number. Nomenclature of puck vectors and how the nomenclature is done. P stands for plasmid, obviously small p and then U and C both capital. U C for University of California. And construction of PUC. What are the components of puck vector or PUC vector? Origin of replication. Obviously, origin of replication is needed. Second thing is a selectable marker. In this case, obviously, it's antibiotic, antibiotic resistance marker. And we have lag Z gene having multiple cloning site. Okay. Now in this case, uh, in this vector, the multiple cloning site is placed under the within the lag Z gene. Earlier we uh, saw the example in PR322 vector is that the multiple cloning site is inserted, it's placed under the antibiotic resistance genes. So that's another difference between PBR322 vectors and PAC18, PAC19 vector, a PUC18, PUC19 vector. So this is example of PUC19 vector. The length given is 2686 base pair near about near about 2.7 kilo bases. And here what we can see we have origin of replication here. We have amp uh, ampicillin resistance gene, uh, the selectable marker of course. And what else we have? We have lag Z. And the polylinker is the region where we have multiple cloning site. This is where we have the multiple cloning site. So multiple cloning site, polylinker, restriction endonuclear sites are the same things in a vector. So that polylinker is placed under this lag Z alpha. Okay. So these are the three components. There is no complexity because of the smaller uh, nature of this PUC vector. PUC vector advantages and disadvantages. As I told you, this is the plasmid vector. So, of course, the advantage is that the cloning process is very simple. The transformation efficiency is very high. And of course, in this case, is it is very small. Uh, it's less complexity is, is there in, in place. But the disadvantage is always the insert size. So, what is the advantage? Let's talk about the uses of PUC vector. Can be used both as a cloning vector as well as, as an expression vector. The same thing for PBR322 as well as uh, PUC vectors. They can be used as cloning vector as well as expression vector. The advantages. What are the advantage? Produce high copy number 500 to 600 copies per cell. In PBR322, the copy number was restricted. That, that was a disadvantage. Although we can increase the uh, copy number in PBR322 by treating it with chloramphenicol. But in this case, no need because naturally the copy number is 500 to 600 per cell. Easy and single step selection processes are involved. And what are the disadvantage? Of course, the insert size. It cannot accommodate a gene more than 15 KB. It's not possible for them to, to in, uh, insert something more than 15 KB. Not possible. So that is one big disadvantage for PUC uh, 19 vector. Rest, everything is very similar to that of the PBR322 vector. So you see, this, this plasmid vectors are very useful when your insert size is very small. So if your insert size is small, you can use this insert size to insert uh, this PUC vector uh, in the target uh, location and obviously we can use it for growth in the uh, host cell which is in this case E. coli bacteria. So that's all about the PUC vector. I believe you have a clear understanding of the PUC19 vector. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and colleagues and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future. Thank you.